let's talk about our motion to compel template. So this is your master template that we're looking at today and you can edit this and it will be permanently edited or you can pull it into a particular case and just edit it for that case. But one thing you want to remember when you're working on a motion to compel or when you're starting to move that way because they are not giving you the discovery documents that you've requested is to coach your client because they're very frustrated in this realm that we have to take certain steps. We have to send them letters and give them warnings before we take certain actions. And this is important if they want any chance of recovering fees. And that's hard for the clients. They just want you to go march up there to the courthouse and have a hearing. So I always tell my clients, if you have any chance of recovering fees, these are the steps we have to take. And then I tell them, you're probably not going to get fees anyway because judges do not like to give them. So it's better for the client to have that realistic expectation. And then if you get them, it's great. So the first step is to, to write a demand letter. And you'll see how this category is longer than the line allowed. But if you cursor over it, it shows you the whole line. So you're going to send the letter, write a letter demanding what they have not properly produced or asking them to supplement because time has passed. You know, in many of these cases, the discovery goes out early and then six months later, we're getting close to trying the case, we need them to supplement. So it may just be a letter that says, thank you for producing it six months ago, but we need an update. And it's important to get that update for your client because that's the only way you're going to know if something fishy went on while the case was pending financially, perhaps, um, or otherwise. So you can assign this, anything on this checklist, to anyone in your office or yourself with a specific date. Your letter should have a specific due date in it. So when you send the demand letter that says, give me the bank records, it needs to say by when. It also should say that if they don't provide the bank records or whatever you're compelling, that you're going to file a motion to compel. So it'll have a due date and the threat that you're going to file the motion to compel. And you may need to ask them to withdraw certain objections. It's not enough to just ask for the records. If they have objected, then they could keep hiding behind that objection. In other words, maybe they give you some of the bank records, but not all. You think you have all of them. Then at trial, they put a different one into evidence they never gave you. Well, they could hide behind that objection and say, I objected. That was one that I didn't think I had to give. So you need them, just like you are going to be asking the court if you get that far, to overrule their objection. If they're doing it voluntarily pursuant to your demand, you need them to withdraw it. So they would need to send you a letter or an amended response that says we're withdrawing that objection and here are the bank records to avoid your hearing. Let's go to our next category, draft motion to compel. So obviously our letter did not work. They did not send their bank records and withdraw their objection. So we need to draft this motion to compel. One thing to keep in mind is discovery disputes are highly technical and they need to be very detailed. Otherwise it's frustrating to the court. So you need to be very specific in your motion about what you're asking to compel, what you want them to give you so it's crystal clear and what objections you're asking to be overruled by the court. So this reminds you of both things to be very specific. So it's not enough to say, hey, they didn't give me everything they were supposed to. Don't do that to the judge. <laughs> and then they'll say at the hearing, well, I didn't know they still needed the bank records. They were so unclear in their motion. So your letter will be very specific and your motion will be very specific. So you're going to do a lot of the legwork at the beginning of this to identify what you have and what you're missing and what you need.